We are on our way to check out the National D-Day Memorial in Bedford, Virginia, just a few minutes drive from where I was born and raised. This site commemorates one of the most pivotal battles of World War II. We are stopping in for a minute at the Bedford Welcome Center as it has a display about the construction and meaning of the memorial that we are about to see. In addition to the usual Welcome Center gift shop and area attraction brochures, there is a miniature model of the D-Day Memorial where you can take in the entire scope of the nine acre memorial that is so large that it's hard to really take in the full view of the full sized memorial all at one time. This mission, codenamed Operation Overlord, was the largest air, land, and sea military operation the world had ever seen. It featured the landing of over 5,000 ships, 11,000 airplanes, and over 150,000 servicemen representing 12 allied nations along five beaches covering a 50-mile stretch of the Normandy region of northern France on June 6, 1944. The Welcome Center also includes a small theater room which shows a documentary about D-Day on a loop throughout the day. As you drive up, you pass Victory Plaza. The main feature of this area is the Overlord Arch. This triumphal arch is 44 feet and 6 inches tall, representing the date of D-Day in the sixth month of 1944. D-Day is a term used to note the date on which a military operation will be initiated. It's used either when the specific date hasn't been determined yet or when secrecy is necessary. This sculpture called Final Tribute shows how temporary shallow graves were marked with the soldier's inverted rifle stuck in the ground and topped with his helmet and dog tags. Due to a misdirection campaign that led Germans to think the Allies were planning to attack elsewhere, the troops only had to overcome light opposition to capture beaches codenamed Gold, Juno, Sword, and Utah. But the Allies faced great opposition at Omaha Beach where there were over 2,000 American casualties. This is the top of another statue depicting Allied troops scaling the cliffs at Normandy. You can better see that full sculpture from the lower level of the memorial. After walking along this curved sidewalk, you end up on the other side of that statue, showing four soldiers climbing up the cliffs after landing on the beaches of Normandy. In front of that is an area representing the beaches, a stylized recreation of one of the boats landing on the beach with its ramp down leads to a water feature with three statues. One is of a soldier who has been shot lying dead in the water. One is of two soldiers running up the beach. And one is of a soldier crawling through the water with his rifle above his head. There are a couple obstacles in the water called tetrahedrons or hedgehogs, a type of beach defense set up by the Germans that were often armed with mines. Beyond the water feature is a plaza made of blue concrete representing the English Channel. It is separated by lines into five sections symbolizing the five beaches invaded on D-Day. The Battle of Normandy, which began that day, would rage on until August, when the region was finally liberated from Nazi Germany's control. Along the side of this plaza are curved walls. On the western side of the plaza are listed the names of all 2,502 American service members who died during the D-Day invasion. On the eastern side of the plaza, the wall lists the names of the fallen 1,913 Allied troops representing their countries, Australia, Belgium, Canada, Czechoslovakia, France, Greece, the Netherlands, New Zealand, Norway, Poland, and the United Kingdom. When you walk between these two walls, you reach an English garden in the shape of the Special Command Allied Expeditionary Force Patch. 
This area represents the planning of the D-Day invasion. Along the garden are busts of various commanders and generals who led the invasion. At the very back is a gazebo featuring a statue of Dwight Eisenhower, Supreme Commander of the Allied Forces on D-Day. The inside ceiling of the gazebo features a mosaic made of small tiles depicting a map of the invasion. If you stand here and turn around to face the rest of the memorial, the story of the D-Day invasion is told in order, starting with the planning, to crossing the English Channel, to storming the beaches of Normandy, to climbing up the cliffs, culminating in the Victory Arch on the upper level where we entered. The memorial also has a Gold Star Family Memorial Garden with a quiet seating area for reflection on the irreplaceable loss suffered by families of those who died on D-Day and in the months-long battle that followed. You might be wondering, why is this national monument located in Bedford, Virginia, at the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains? There is a monument at the memorial that explains this as well. The answer is that the town of Bedford, Virginia, with only 3,200 residents in 1944, had 44 residents that were active duty military members participating in the D-Day invasion. By day's end, 19 of Bedford's soldiers in the invasion were dead. Proportional to population, this community suffered the greatest losses of any in America on D-Day. The memorial was placed here to honor that city's loss. You can learn more about the Bedford Boys in a great book by Alex Kershaw called The Bedford Boys. Bedford, Virginia is situated between the larger towns of Roanoke and Lynchburg, Virginia. If you travel through the area, we highly recommend a stop at this powerful memorial to pause and remember those who paid the ultimate sacrifice when called to do so by their country. Tickets are $10 for adults and $6 for students. Click the links at the end of this video to see some other videos we think you'll enjoy. I'm Alice. And I'm Jack. Please click the subscribe button and notification bell so we'll be sure to see you the next time we're traveling through.